What's going on everyone and welcome back to another video. So just to start it off, I want to say sorry for missing a video last week. So last week I initially recorded a thick to fit video that I was going to upload. However, it was raining outside and we have a pretty bad storm here in San Jose. And because of it, the entire audio just came out really scrambled and inaudible. And because of that, I was actually going to delay the upload of the video and remake it on the next day, which was going to be Saturday. However, on Friday night, I ended up getting my Moderna booster. And if you didn't know, the booster just kind of screws you over and I felt like complete crap the entire weekend. I mean, I could barely lift my arm. I had full body sweating. I had like mm, weird muscular spasms and it just kind of screwed me over. But now I'm back and I feel better than ever and I'm excited to start moving forward with this video series again. So let's get into the video. So for this week, I wanted to touch base with another what is episode and do a little bit of an episode about what is military nursing. So if you guys don't know, my name is Ensign Padilla and I'm with the US Navy Nurse Corps Reserve until I go active duty and do ODS in this upcoming January. Now we know people are gonna hear military and instantly think, well, you're gonna be shooting people and you're gonna be triaging the wounded in your unit and you're gonna be going overseas and doing deployments, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. The thing is, is that military nurses are pretty much parallel to that of civilian nurses and can fulfill the exact same roles, both combat and non-combat associated. And if I'm being completely honest, a majority of nurses are going to be staying stateside and don't actually deploy outside of the continental US for the entirety of their time in service. However, out of the entirety, there are a select few and as well as volunteers that do get chosen to go on deployments where they get to do mostly medical missions or missions where they do help uh, search and rescue and actually save people after natural disasters. And even when a nurse is going to be deployed somewhere like Iraq or Afghanistan, they're typically going to be what's considered inside the wire, which is inside a fortified base. Whereas their enlisted counterparts, the medics and the corpsmen, are going to be working directly outside the wire with the marines directly. But that doesn't mean you aren't going to be fully equipped to defend yourself if things do turn sideways. Now, depending on the branch you go into, you could be trained in, you know, different firearms, such as the classic Beretta 92FS, or for the Zoomers out there, the M9. You could use the Sig Sauer 226, the M16, Benelli M4 Super 90 shotgun, Mossberg 590, and the Remington 870, which are also shotguns. And I'm just going to lay this out here, but nurses are not typically trained with sniper rifles, even if they are attached to, say, a sniper recon group. Uh, so if you do have plans on becoming the next Chris Kyle, I'm sorry, you are out of luck. But getting back into it, military nurses actually do work the exact same fields and fulfill the same roles of that of civilian nurses. And because it is the military, you are given a lot more opportunities to learn a variety of roles because as the military is, if they need you somewhere completely outside of your realm of comfort, they're going to place you there because they need bodies. An example of this is, say you're working on a med search floor in a naval base in San Diego. Um, if they do need someone to work OB in the East Coast or in the Midwest and you don't really want to go, but the military says you have to go, then you bet your ass you're going. And regardless of if you've had any extensive training in OB in the past, they're going to place you there and they're going to have you learn along the way. This is comparable to how civilian nurses will sometimes have to float units or float floors because they need additional help in a different floor or someone called out work. Um, but because it's the military, it's not just, you know, moving to a different floor on a different day. This is packing up your bags and moving halfway across the U.S. or, or all the way across the U.S. Now, to work as a military nurse, you would need to join the Army, the Navy, or the Air Force. And you could either do this before you actually get your license, such as if you're currently in nursing school, or you could do this after the fact, through direct commission. And since you're already going to be in the process of receiving, or if you've already received your degree from an accredited school, you're going to be going in as an officer. Now, in the military, you have two sides. You have the enlisted and you have the officer. The enlisted men are people that don't have previous uh, higher education. Officers already do, and they have a college degree that goes with it. I guess there are three if you consider warrant officers, but that's a whole nother rabbit hole that I don't have the time to go down into. Now, enlisted men will go in and start off as privates or seamen or airmen recruits, depending on the branch that you join. And their rank structure goes up to ending up at Sergeant Major, Chief Master Sergeant, or Master Chief. Now, officers, on the other hand, will start off as a lieutenant or an ensign, 
and as the rank structure goes up, at the very top you have generals and admirals. As an RN in the military, you will start off at the lowest level of an officer rank, such as how I, as a new grad nurse, am currently an ensign in the US Navy Nurse Corps. And this is going to be exclusively for RNs. If you do want to be an LVN or LPN, you would have to join as a corpsman or a medic and then work your way up the rank structure. And at the highest point, I believe you can become an LVN, LPN, or you could become what's considered an independent duty medic or corpsman. And I know that I did not mention the Marines or the Coast Guard earlier, and for the reasoning behind that, I'll explain it now. As the US Marine Corps is actually a part of the Department of the Navy, uh, they actually use the medical staff, such as the officers and enlisted men, for their medical support. A big example of this is the 8404 US Navy Corpsmen, which are specially trained Flea Marine Force Corpsmen that are, you know, taught combat operations as well as field medicine in order to take care of Marines out on the field. And for the US Coast Guard, they actually do rely heavily on medical contract workers as well as the United States Public Health Service uh, because they are part of the Department of Homeland Security instead of the DOD. But enough of that, because now I'm actually going to talk about the roles that you as a military RN can fulfill. The roles that US military nurses can fulfill are as expansive of what civilian nurses can do with a few additional caveats. You could do med surge, ortho, PACU, dialysis, ED, ICU, OR, public health, etc. I mean, you could do anything you want to do as a nurse in the military. But now here comes the caveat part. Just because you are highly skilled in a specific part of the nursing process, say in the ICU or in the ED, doesn't mean that you're always going to be placed in there. Like I mentioned prior, because you are in the military, they're going to sign you where they actually need you. If they need you to pack up and go to Kuwait on a nine month deployment, then you bet your ass you're going. But at the same time, if they give you the opportunity to do a nine month deployment, say in Guam, or they're going to send you away to Hawaii for a couple years, then you also have that going for you. And if you do have the chance to do a deployment, I highly recommend that you take every opportunity to do so, just because the military can give you so much access to travel and allow you to see new things that you've never thought of before. And not to mention, but you're able to touch so many lives, especially those who are less fortunate than yourself. A huge example of this is the US Navy's famous hospital ship, USNS Mercy. Over the years, the USNS Mercy has been to the Philippines, the Persian Sea, Burma, Indonesia, Vietnam, Cambodia, Fiji, Papua New Guinea, Malaysia, and even supported the LA area during the initial COVID-19 pandemic. And on these hospital ships, the nurses and the other hospital staff that are going to be assigned are going to be mostly there for either recovery or medical missions. These medical and recovery missions range from things such as helping people in third world countries with medical needs or helping people with recovery and search and rescue triage missions, as well as natural disaster mitigation. You also have other ships as well, such as the USNS Comfort, which works on the Atlantic border of the US, whereas the USNS Mercy works on the Pacific. But now I'm going to be mentioning the biggest difference between military and civilian nurses. As a nurse, we have it pretty much drilled in us that SBAR is pretty much our way of talking up the chain of command and requesting further treatment of the patient. Now, SBAR stands for Situation, Background, Assessment, and Recommendation. The recommendation portion is pretty much a culmination of everything that we've gotten from the Situation, Background, and Assessment and lead it up the chain of command to the primary provider, being that of the MD, PA, or uh, NP. But in the military, you work up the chain of command via rank instead. And sometimes making up your own recommendation for someone else that you're working for, such as if you're both nurses and one person is, say, a lieutenant junior grade and you're an ensign, well, the lieutenant junior grade is going to take priority because they are of a higher rank than you. And if you do try to go over them, it might be seen as insubordination and you can get an NJP or an Article 15 for that. During my preceptorship during semester six, I actually did meet a prior service Navy nurse who said that he ended up leaving just because every time he tried to make a recommendation on how to treat a patient, it was like walking on eggshells. But I mean, you are going to hit that hierarchy mentality pretty much everywhere, even as a civilian nurse, because you are going to have MDs and PAs sometimes look down upon you because they are considered a higher level provider. But I don't like getting into the whole medical politics side of things just because it's messy and because I think it takes away and detracts from what we as medical workers actually try to do, and that's take care of patients, not bigger amongst it, one another. But that's pretty much it. Military nursing is pretty much the same as civilian nursing, 
with more bureaucracy, but more opportunities to advance your career if you get a good deployment or a good duty station. I've met so many prior service military nurses that went into the service, had a bunch of great experiences, and once they actually got out into the civilian world, they had a, a pretty much a slew of opportunities that awaited them because they've done so much in the military side. An example of this is say that you get out after doing four years of military nursing, you have a lot more opportunities to get into uh, CCT or critical care transport nursing if you want to, just because you've had a lot of that field experience. But if you are interested in going into this field, then please do talk to a medical officer recruiter. Um, I almost got coerced into joining in as a corpsman while I was still in college, but luckily I was able to talk to Lieutenant Brown and Chief DeMonte and they got me into the whole NCP program. And if you guys do have any questions or comments, then please do leave it in the comment box below and I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. But that's pretty much going to do it. If you guys like what you saw, please like, comment, subscribe, and make sure to hit that bell. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you all so much for supporting me. I mean, my channel has been doing so well and I've seen it grow so much since its humble beginnings. You guys are the best and I'm just so happy to be on this journey along with you. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Peace.